What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL world? How you doing, Divis Rivals? This is Steven Heider, PA City Sports Channel. Sports Channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. All right, guys, today's topic. Uh, final kind of 53-man roster prediction things, guys. I hate doing these just because it's an initial 53. It's fluid situation. It moves and it evolves over time. When you get to situations with a new head coach and with a lot of you know mitigating circumstances to consider, it makes predicting a 53-man roster incredibly difficult, to be quite honest, guys. But nonetheless, I'm going to talk about the way I see things, some of the things I think they might do to try to manipulate things, and we'll just talk position by position, guys. Y'all ready for this? Quarterbacks. Quarterbacks are going to be different from my previous two predictions because Gardner Minshew is here. So I have three quarterbacks. You guys know I'm not a huge proponent of carrying three quarterbacks. I just think it's a waste of roster space to carry a third quarterback just because the simple fact is they can't really provide much for you on a special teams perspective unless one of your quarterbacks can be a placeholder on, on special teams, which is not the case with Philadelphia. Aaron Sippos does that as the placeholder. So, I mean, they run your scout team, but you can carry a guy on the practice team to do that. I just think anytime you get a really young quarterback, guys, even go back to 2016, Carson Wentz, guys, you know, you went from having Sam Bradford in that room with Carson Wentz originally to also having, you know, um, Daniels come in from Kansas City, who was the guy who knew the offense, right, Chase Daniels. So, I mean, even that original plan was to be three quarterback heavy there. Um, obviously, player got moved, and I wouldn't rule that out. That's part one. I would not rule out Joe Flacco being moved because – if he's traded post June first, although we will lose money against 22's cap, so 22's cap will lose money. We would actually gain about a million dollars against 2021's cap. That's because the you know, his salary is guaranteed, so his salary will be guaranteed, which means you do have to pay up the million some dollars he has in base salary. But outside of that, guys, the all the prorated money stuff, all that prorated money stuff, you only have to pay this year's you know some of the prorated money for this current cap year then the following cap year all the remaining years that you divided up that you prorated that money comes due so you would actually save a million this year although you would lose a little bit of money in 2022 it's not a significant loss guys i think they could definitely bear it but we are a little up against the cap in 2022 if you guys haven't looked at it over the cap and look at the salary cap tables and look at 2022 i would highly suggest you do because it matters all right guys so hertz flacco gardner Minshew. i would not rule out you know the eagles moving on from flacco Especially if there's a team that's just really quarterback needy. It just it makes sense. Flacco can still play, in my opinion. He can still be a very good backup to a team. I just don't think you need Flacco in Minshew, but if you have him, you have him. Uh, Gardner Minshew makes sense as a guy for here's for a couple of years, right? I mean, he gives you a lot of flexibility here, right? He could be a guy that he's not mobile. I'm not calling him. He's not he's not a Hurts. He's not he's not those type of you know mobile quarterbacks. But he's certainly he's certainly better aware or or more capable in the pocket of moving than Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco is just, you know, once a play breaks down and there's no outlet to throw the ball, it's dead. Now, I will say Flacco does have pretty respectable numbers from last year when you looked at his pressure to, to sack rate, the conversion rate on that. It was only like 10%, which is actually lower than Jalen Hurts's. but at the same time, Jalen Hurts can make a play if you need be. If you can get Jalen Hurts to play on time and then a play still breaks down, even if he's playing on time, there's just nowhere to go with the football, Hurts can probably make a football move to, to elude pressure. We're not going to get that from Flacco, and I think you can make the same argument with Gardner Minshew. That would be part one, I would say, guys. The other part to this is is that in the in the event that Jalen Hurts doesn't work out and you're in the draft and you have to draft a guy, Gardner Minshew can be a bridge for the 2022 season. So I, I think you kind of have both of those things in play. So number one, he could be Jalen Hurts' backup for two years and give you some flexibility in the scheme and know that he's not completely a contrast in ability. But number two, he could be a bridge quarterback if need be. All right, guys, so I'm going to say three quarterbacks right now. Four running backs. So I got Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell, Jordan Howard, Boston Scott. Um, here's the thing, guys. you got to be really careful when you project veterans onto the roster because if they're a vested veteran, meaning they have more than four years of accumulated years in the league, their contract is guaranteed once week one rolls around. All right? So you look at a guy like Jordan Howard, you, the first question you have to ask yourself is, is, if you really want a guy, right, you don't want a guy to get exposed to, to waivers. Like, say you, they really like Jason Huntley, right? Say they like a guy like that. I'm not saying they do, guys. I'm saying if that's a scenario, right? You could, in theory, waive a guy like Jordan Howard who's unlikely to be claimed. I'm not going to say that it'd be, in, you know, like, oh, he'll never get claimed. Like, it's it's possible, but very unlikely, in my opinion. 
And then you can bring him back like a week or so after week one. You can bring him back into your rotation. Then you can get, you know, Gainwell probably cleared through because then teams will have built up their rosters. Or not Gainwell. I'm sorry, guys. Gainwell would definitely be the wrong person to cut. George, uh, Jason Huntley, guys. Then you can get a guy like Jason Huntley through to your, your practice squad, guys. So, I mean, you got to be careful something like that. But for the time being, guys, I'm going to project four. Sanders, Gainwell, Howard, Scott onto the active roster. Also, I wouldn't rule out if a team really needs to change a pace back. I don't think the Eagles are married to Boston Scott, although he's clearly probably the the one of the better third down receiving back options we have. But I think Gainwell can play a lot of these roles and a lot of these options. I'd also argue that Boston Scott's pretty good in between the tackles running, but I thought Gainwell did pretty good, you know, on, on Friday's game as well, kind of distributing that. So I mean, we'll have to see how he does in game, but I wouldn't rule it out, guys. Tight ends, I went three, so I went three quarterbacks, four running backs, three tight ends. A lot of caveat here. Same scenario I presented to you all last week, guys. I'm going to go Zach Ertz, Dallas Scott, or Tyree Jackson. Tyree Jackson, I'm saying, will be on initial 53. So he will go active to short-term IR. So what you, basically what you do is you carry a guy like this, right? And then you're going to cut a guy like Richard Rodgers. Okay, Richard Rodgers may or may not get claimed. I think Richard Rodgers is a suitable number two tight end for most teams. But in saying that, guys, Richard Rodgers is a vested veteran, meaning if he's on your roster in week one, you have to fully guarantee the money. When you look at guys like Jordan Howard and Richard Rodgers, you also got to keep in mind, you can protect guys this year, you know, just like last year with that 16-man expanded practice squad. You can protect guys on the practice squad so people can't claim them. So anytime you get a vested veteran that you're going to clear to make room on your roster for other people, if you can get them through and then bring them back to your practice squad in week two or even to your active roster. You, got, you always have to be wary of that. But I'm going to say that Tyree Jackson goes active to short-term IR once they put... Tyree Jackson on the short-term IR, then they'll bring back Richard Rodgers probably following week one. He'd be back with the Eagles, and then you wouldn't have to pay the salary. To be honest with you, Richard Rodgers' salary is not that high. They probably could just bring back week one. I don't think it's that big a deal. It's not that huge of a cap savings measure. But nonetheless, you always got to pay attention to little tricky things like that. But I will warn, it's not a huge cap savings, guys. Um, wide receivers, I went five. This is probably what's going to cause some arguments and some controversy, guys. Um, it's not necessarily how I would per se do this, but I'm just going to judge it from what I'm seeing on the field and what I'm seeing from the coaching staff and, and what I feel is probably going to happen. Devontae Smith, Jalen Rager, Quez Watkins, to me, makes sense as the one, two, three. I think when you get to the fourth and the fifth, guys, this is where things get very subjective. So obviously, I think we all are going to have Devontae Smith, Jalen Rager, and Quez Watkins on our rosters. I went with Greg Ward Jr. as my fourth, and then I went with J.J. Arcega Whiteside as my fifth. Um... I think you can make an argument to put John Hightower on the roster. You can make an argument to put, you know, Travis Fulgham on the roster. Uh, Travis Fulgham probably has a bigger ceiling, a better ceiling, a higher ceiling, if you will, than J.J. Arcega Whiteside. J.J.'s outplayed him in camp, though, guys. Let's be honest. Um, we can say, you know, it's not the first time J.J. has flashed in preseason games or in camp, and I agree. But you preach competition, man. It gets kind of hard to back out of those words a little bit. Uh, Greg Ward Jr., I, I can totally understand guys saying, like, man, he probably could get through to the practice squad and protect him. He'd probably get through the practice squad, and then, you know, even if he doesn't get there, you're, you're fine. So I can understand people who say that they would probably elevate a guy like John Hightower, who's a, more of a vertical threat there. But I do think Greg Ward Jr. does have some utility inside this Philadelphia Eagles offense. I think he's a very good conversion down guy. I think he can pick up first downs on those third down plays. I do think that he's a fairly nuanced throughout runner. He's not a deep threat. He's not incredibly explosive. Those things are true, but I do think he's pretty good in the red zone for not being a tall guy. He just creates separation through little subtle ways. Um, I like Greg Ward Jr. personally there. I, I just I go with the experience on that one, but it's up to interpretation, guys. I definitely don't rule out the fact that it could be Fulgham and Hightower over Ward Jr. and J.J. I think all those things are impossibility. It's, it's, it's really just a preference thing. Offensive line is another incredibly difficult one to predict. Obviously, judging from the numbers I have, you know I'm going to keep 10 offensive linemen. The, five, the first five are obvious, guys, right? Malata, Sayomalu, Kelsey, Brooks, and Johnson. That's your starting five. And then I think you get to your, your first three off the bench, which one of them we have to talk a little bit about. But Herbig, Dickerson, Driscoll, I see as like your first three off the bench. And then it gets tricky, guys. So... I'm just going to tell you what I did here, and I'll give you the caveats behind this, right? Andre Dillard, Matt Pryor, I, I put in here. But just like Joe Flacco, I do think there's a distinct possibility that Andre Dillard is traded today or tomorrow. I do think that teams are very much tackled to, you know, needy, and Andre Dillard is a former first-round pick, even if it, even if he doesn't have that kind of talent. He's got that kind of reputation. We'll, we'll see what happens, man. There's a lot at play here when you talk about something like reputation. Yeah, he's got a reputation of being a, you know, a truly talented 
you know, past pro player. He's also got a reputation of some other things that are external to football. Um, Andre Dillard, though, I think ultimately is, there's a good chance he gets moved. But right now, he's still on the team. I have to project him on the roster, guys. So I got Herbig, Dickerson, Driscoll, Dillard. That's my nine. And then my tenth was a battle between Pryor, Clark, and Opeta. So Matt Pryor, Raven Clark, and Sue Opeta. You guys know if this was solely my decision, Owasika would be on this roster. I would definitely take Kyoto Owasika over a lot of these guys, to be quite honest. I think there's more upside to developing. But I'm going off of what I think the coaching staff will do, and I have Matt Pryor in. All right? um, I do know that they like Sue Opeta, so I wouldn't be shocked. The only reason I didn't project Sue Opeta, guys, is that I feel like he's only a left guard, really. He doesn't give you a lot of flexibility. You know, in the event, you get down to three linemen down. So, say you got to play Driscoll out at tackle for whatever reason. Then you got to put Herbig in at one of the guard spots. So you got your first up off the bench guard, one of your first up off the bench tackles. Then I, I could see where a guy like Apeta would make sense coming into the game and essentially being the, the second guard. But in, in normal cases, he'd be a third because in a perfect world where you have these guys stacked, it's going to probably be Herbig at guard. Driscoll would be the next guy up. And then you would probably have a, an Apeta, right? I just think a guy like Matt Pryor, although it hasn't been good, guys, and there's reason to doubt this, no doubt about it, he gives you guard tackle flexibility, even if it's not special. Um, the other guy that I really feel like makes some sense and it could happen is LaRaven Clark. LaRaven Clark could get it over Matt Pryor. Same exact type of player, guys. Monsters. Huge reach guys. they got these monster reaches. They're big guys. They're physical. LaRaven Clark has familiarity with the coaching staff. The only reason I'm not projecting him onto the roster right now, guys, is that he just didn't play a lot. And then when he did play last week, he was kind of buried a little bit on the depth chart. So he would have to go off of reputation of, of what happened in Indianapolis, guys. So I don't know. I didn't project him on there. But I, I will definitely say that you could absolutely move Matt Pryor off this roster and put a LaRaven Clark or a Suapetta in there. You know, it makes sense. And if Andre Dillard does get traded, then probably a, a LaRaven Clark or a Suapetta is going to get moved into the active roster. I do think that that's, that's probably what would exactly what would happen. All right, guys defensive team right so i got my 25 offensive players and yes guys i'm gonna give you some elements of equity here in terms of how i'm distributing roster stuff defensive ends i got six i got brandon graham Derek barnett josh Watt, josh sweat ryan kerrigan milton williams teron jackson teron jackson's the first time i featured him on the active 53 i just think he's flashing guys i think teron jackson has flashed every single preseason game a little bit i mean he struggled here and there i've seen some things but I'm just looking at it, man. You get a guy like Milton Williams who gives you a lot of flexibility. I think you can go light in the defensive tackle position, and I think you can manipulate things a little bit, right? But obviously, if they, if they don't, I would, you know, keep in mind I'm going to do my practice squad. If Teron Jackson doesn't make the actual roster, I, abs I absolutely would have him on the practice squad. I'm going to go six defensive ends right now. Leaves me with three defensive tackles. Give me a minute. I'm going to explain how I'm going to do this. Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargraves, Hassan Ridgeway is my three defensive tackles. Obviously, we have guys like Milton Williams and Brandon Graham who can bounce inside and give you an, a pass rush. And that's why I left T.Y. McGill off. Because T.Y. McGill is not a very good run-defending defensive tackle. He's more of a pass rush generating guy. And he's been pretty effective at it. You know what I mean? But I do know that I can get that same thing out of bouncing Milton Williams inside, bouncing a Brandon Graham inside if I need to. Like, I can get the same result there, right? Um, so what I did with T.Y. McGill, guys, is I did a little fancy cat, or not cat, I did a little fancy cat move it is a cat move but it's also a little bit of a, a fancy roster move which is to say that he's a vested veteran so it does make sense to bring him back in week after week one to bring back a ty mcgill and put him on your practice squad and then you could protect him if you know you're going to need him but also because you know ty mcgill with the vested veteran all that stuff guys you know you can, you're going to be allowed to carry an extra two players on your on your active roster come game day so a ty mcgill could easily come back up and do that that's why i'm, I'm leaving him off just because i'm just trying to figure out how they get the numbers on certain things Linebackers, I went really heavy, which I know is crazy, but it's mostly because of special teams production and then just the weird little wrinkles I think we're going to see in this defensive scheme. You have to carry a Sam, and I think that pushes you on the five linebackers. So I got Jannard Avery, who is injured, and that complicates things. Jannard Avery, Eric Wilson, Alex Singleton, Davion Taylor, and TJ Edwards, I think, are kind of more of the locks I have on the roster. Jannard Avery, I'm sure the Eagles wouldn't mind moving him or trading him, but... Right now, I think he's on the roster until I see something like that happen, guys. But the other guys that are really fighting out, I have three other linebackers, I think, fighting for one spot on the active roster. I got Patrick Johnson, Sean Bradley, Jacoby Stevens. For my purposes, because I do think they're going to play some Sam, and I do think Jannard Avery is banged up, I have Patrick Johnson probably getting the original nod on the 53. And guys, remember, this is fluid. It's going to change throughout the course of the year. 
Um, Sean Bradley is very well liked, and I could see him being put on the practice squad and being an active day call-up because he was named a captain last week. Uh, they like Sean Bradley. He's a very good special teams player, man. He, he can play in, inside and, and play a will position. He can be a will or a mic for you. Um, I like Sean Bradley. I think he's pretty, I think he's fairly good against the run. I think he's, you know, I don't think he's quite as good as, as TJ Edwards, but I, I think he's worth developing. So I have him on the back end. Jacoby Stevens, I think is a pretty good player. Uh, I do worry about Jacoby Stevens potentially being claimed by a team that just really likes his, you know, his film from college, but Jacoby Stevens just didn't compete enough to, to make this group as I had it. But you never know, man. I mean, if the Eagles have a hunch that someone's going to claim him, they'll put him through the active roster, guys. You know how that stuff works. So, right now, though, I'm going to say Avery Wilson, Singleton, Taylor, Edwards, Johnson. Uh, cornerbacks, I went light. I went five. Give me a minute. I'm going to explain it. I went Darius Slay, Stephen Nelson, Avante Maddox, Zach McPherson, and then I went Josiah Scott. So, Zach McPherson would be the outside corner. He'd be your third outside corner. He also has some ability to play inside. Josiah Scott would be your main backup on the interior. Then you got guys like Maddox and Scott in pinches, could play outside. It ain't ideal, guys. They're not tall. They're, these are not big guys. Um... That's how I have them, though, guys. That, that's that's the way I structured it. And then, basically, what I have here is I have two guys I think are in consideration for the roster, which is Michael Jaquette and Craig James. But I put both of those guys as more practice squad waived guys. Michael Jaquette, I still think, needs time to develop, guys. I do think that he could be a guy you call up on game day. If you start feeling like you're getting a little light at corner and you need a guy, you can call a Michael Jaquette up to play outside. Um, Craig James will be another guy that's he's a veteran. He's a very good special teams player. He's a guy that you probably could get through to the practice squad, in my opinion, and then kind of protect him if you need be for a few games. So, you know, if you have a few games where he's still kind of hanging around and, and you need that corner, you could protect a, a Craig James for a couple of weeks. So, that's how I kind of have it, guys. It's Derry Slay, Stephen Nelson, Maddox, McPherson, and Scott making me active. Then I went five safeties because we got injuries here, right? Kevon Wallace is dealing with a little bit of stuff. Rodney McLeod is, is coming back from an ACL. So, you have, to my opinion, you kind of have to go heavy here. So I went with Harris, Anthony Harris, Rodney McLeod, Kevon Wallace, or Kayvon Wallace, um, Marcus Epps. I'm going to go Elijah Riley as the fifth. Give me a second. I'll explain why I'm doing that. If I'm not mistaken, Andrew Adams is a vested veteran. The money's not great. It's, it's not purely because of money why you would do this move, but it would be a significant decrease in the amount of money you have to pay the player. The player, from the player's perspective, it's a huge difference in the amount of money they make on game checks here. But I do think Andrew Adams is a guy that if you really do need this, you can put him on the practice squad. You can protect him for a couple of weeks until you get Kevon Wallace and Rodney McLeod back healthy. And then he's a guy that you could just let another team that really needs him and give this young man an opportunity to make money. Let him go. Let him get claimed by another team, guys, in my opinion. I think you could do something fancy with that when it comes to Andrew Adams. I think you could protect him on the practice squad for a couple of, you know, first couple of weeks until you know you got a healthy McLeod back. You know you got a healthy you know, Kevon Wallace back. You got Elijah Riley as your fourth. You got Marcus Epps in there as well. You know, or, I'm sorry, as your fifth. I think you have enough depth at that point at safety where you could just let an Andrew Adams go if he gets claimed past that point. So that's how I would do it, guys. That's my 53. I'll name them all out again, guys. So Jalen Hurts, Joe Flacco, Gardner Minshew, Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell, Jordan Howard, Boston Scott, Zach Ertz, Dallas Goddard, Tyree Jackson. Guys, remember, I gave you a lot of little specialties here of how some of this stuff is going to work. Devontae Smith, Jalen Rager, Quez Watkins, Greg Ward Jr., J.J. Arthaga, Whiteside, Jordan Mulata, Isaac Sayamalu, Jason Kelsey, Brandon Brooks, Lane Johnson, Nate Herbig, Landon Dickerson, Jack Driscoll, Andre Dillard, Matt Pryor. Defense, Brandon Graham, Derek Barnett, Josh Sweat, Ryan Kerrigan, Milton Williams, Teron Jackson, Fletcher Cox, Siobhan Hargrave, Hassan Ridgeway. Uh, linebackers, Jannard Avery, Eric Wilson, Alex Singleton, Davion Taylor, TJ Edwards, Patrick Johnson. Cornerbacks, Darius Slay, Stephen Nelson, Avante Maddox, Zach McPherson, Josiah Scott. Safeties, Anthony Harris, Rodney McLeod, Kevon Wallace, Marcus Epps, Elijah Riley, and I gave you guys a lot of special mitigating circumstances, so here's my practice squad. My 16 players practice squad, I, I kept it in an equitable fashion, guys. Brett Toth, Coyote uh, Oasika, LaRaven Clark, Jack Stahl, Andrew Patton, uh, Markin uh, McKell, Elijah Riley, uh, Kerry Angeline. I don't know why I put Elijah Riley over here, guys. <laughs> um, that doesn't make sense. Let me take that one off, because that doesn't that make sense. Hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I gave myself an opportunity for a steal here. I, I didn't go equity, I guess. Uh, Jaquan Bailey, Sean Bradley, T.Y. McGill, Marlon tui uh Jacoby Stevens, Craig James, Michael Jaquette, Andrew Adams, and I'll add Raekwon Williams since I saved an offensive space. 
So I didn't go as equity as I thought. I wasn't as equitable as I thought here. That's how I got this 53-man roster, guys. All right, y'all. You know I appreciate y'all. Leave y'all's comments down below. Let me know you're 53, guys. We're all just throwing darts at the dartboard, hoping that, you know, I'm 90% stick. I'm happy. All right, guys. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Where do you got? What do you have some differences at? Tell me the differences you have, guys. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'll see y'all in the next video.